It's when you can say, yes, Lord, it makes everything all right. Oh, praise is a double name. That's, I'm a radio choir, you know, they're getting ready for their anniversary. The last of this month, I believe it's the 30th of this month, they're getting ready for their anniversary. And of course, Pastor Bonner is supposed to do the preaching for them. That makes it complete, the radio choir and the radio preacher together. Praise the Lord, an unbeatable combination. Praise the Lord, if the radio choir doesn't leave town, I'll try not to leave town. Praise the Lord, and just have a circle around that date, the 30th. Praise the Lord, here at Refuge Temple, the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart, absolutely and positively. Make a note of it and plan to be here supporting this great choir, one of the best in the country. All right, give us your last selection, choir.
is time to say a prayer. Lord, I hear of showers, of blessings. Thou art scattering full and free. Showers of thirsty soul refreshing. Let some drops now fall on even me, Lord, even me. Let some drops now fall on me. Will you stand with us, sing with us, and let us say a prayer for someone that needs showers of blessings, someone that needs miracles in their lives. There are saints in the hospitals, saints on their beds of affliction, I want the Lord to reach them tonight. I want the Lord to touch them tonight. I want the Lord to stretch forth his healing hand. Put his hand on somebody's body. Tell that demon of sickness and misery. Let this woman go. Let this woman go. To be healed by your mighty power. Stretch out your hand, Lord. Make that demon of misery. Take his hands off. Come out, Jesus. Your children want to be healed, Lord. Your children want to be healed. Your children want to be healed. Oh, stretch out your hand, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. I stretch my hand to you, Lord. No other help I know. I want a miracle for a broken heart. I want a miracle for a depressed soul. I want a miracle for someone, Lord. In the valley, can't get out, Lord. I want a miracle, Jesus. Someone, Lord, in despair. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand, Lord. Jesus, hear us tonight. Somebody's waiting by the bedside. Someone is waiting in the hospital ward. Jesus, Jesus, stretch out your hand, Lord. Do something for somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Do it now, Lord. Do it right now, Jesus. Break every chain, break every fetter, cast out every demon, loose every bound, set the captive free in the name of Jesus Christ. Do it right now. Do it right now, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I ask these blessings, Lord Jesus Christ.
God bless you, be seated and turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, and the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. Matthew, we will read first Matthew 14, verse 23, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was nigh in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds was contrary. How to survive is our message in the storm. How to survive. We talked about the storm this morning, but this is a total different aspect because in this age, great emphasis placed on the survival of the nation. We know that survival is number one in every man's life. Being able to survive under difficult circumstances, being able to survive when odds are against you, being able to survive when friends turn their backs on you, being able to survive when your husband walk out on you. Being able to survive when your wife divorce you. Being able to survive when the devil take your case. Being able to survive the forces of criticism, the forces of dismay and bewilderment. Being able to survive the powers of loneliness and despair. Being able to survive. Survival is the word. It is important because it deals with life something that you're trying to hold on to, something that you don't want to give up, something that you hold to be dear, treacherous to your heart, being able to survive. Surviving the storm doesn't call for a long duration Normally, and some storms last longer than others. Some storms is a few hours. Some storms is less than an hour. Some storms are all day and all night. Some storms last, like Job's storm. It lasted for weeks and months. How do you survive is the $50,000 question because we know storms are going to come. So we might well think of survival before it does come. When I meet people who tell me they don't have no problems and no crises, and praise the Lord, I envy you. Because I've had so many of them. Praise the Lord. I've come up on the rough side. Those of you who were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, I envy you. Born with diamonds on your finger, I envy you. Born with a bank account that you never had to worry about where your bread is coming from, I envy you. I was born a poor boy. 
Praise the Lord, and didn't know whether I was going to have a biscuit for tomorrow. I know there are ways to survive, no matter what your circumstances are. Rich folks are not the only survivors. You got poor folks who can survive too. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Knowing how to survive. It's important to all people because when you think of the pressures that comes against uh, the believers, and believe me, Satan isn't fighting sinners. He's fighting Christians. Praise the God, folks. Satan doesn't fight sinners. Satan blesses sinners. That's why sinners hit the number every day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Satan is helping them out. Praise the Lord. Giving them dreams and visions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then put numbers in their mind that's got to come out. That's Satan's job. Blessing his folks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is so good at blessing his folks. That's why it's hard for some people to give up being a sinner because the devil is good to you. Praise the Lord. Didn't you know that? <laughs> the devil is good to his folks. Praise the Lord. Plenty of everything. Plenty of money. Plenty of liquor. Plenty of wine. Plenty of women. Plenty of men. Plenty. Plenty. Plenty of everything. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And when you come to the Lord, one husband, one wife. Oh, Hallelujah. That's why some folks can't live this Christian life. Praise the Lord. God say one. <laughs> and the devil said, come on my side, you can have five. You can have as many as you want. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God knows that he can satisfy you with one and make you feel better than the man that has five. Amen. Oh, praise the name of God. The name of the game is survival. It's survival. We must survive the storms of life. For they are inevitable forces that are coming into our world and they cannot be stopped. Jesus told us that when he was here. Praise the Lord. He said, you're going to have tribulations. You're going to have the stress. And he said, they're going to beat you up. And they're going to kill you. He told the disciples what to expect. Oh, yes, he did. He told them, they're going to put you out. And, and your enemy is going to be in your own house, he says. He told you all of this. While he was here, praise the Lord, and these Christian folks are strange breed of folks, you know. They're, they are unusual because anybody that's a child of God and can survive, you got to take your hat off to them because it isn't easy to be a child of God. Everything is against you as a child. Everything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything. Is against you. Sometimes your own thoughts are against you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you wonder where all these bad thoughts are coming from. They come in against you, rob you of your joy, take your peace. Those are your thoughts too. Praise are coming from within you, and you got to fight them in order to survive. I mean, you got to fight yourself. Praise the Lord. That old man, hallelujah, that old man who don't wish you well, that old man who is determined you're not going to live holy, that old man, Paul said we are crucified with Christ, that that old man might be destroyed because he is our enemy. He creates storms for the Christian family. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad that I have learned how to survive. Survival 
is absolutely necessary. Look at America. America is attempting to make plans for her survival of an atomic attack, for an hydrogen attack, for missile attack from Russia. We are making plans, plans that the public do not know about. They don't know the plans that the government are making for the survival of this nation. And they're making plans not for our survival, but for the fat cats, the, the aristocrats, because rich folks can build silos and spend millions of dollars for a hole in the earth under the ground to hide in the case of the atomic attack. Poor folks only hiding place is God. Praise the name of God, hallelujah. If you haven't got God, hallelujah, you're in a bad fix. Uh, the rich man is in a bad fix too, but he just don't know it. Praise the Lord, because that silo that he's building under the ground, if a bomb fall on it, it'll blow him to hell, just like it blow anybody else. Praise the name of God, but I tell you, the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength, my help in the time of trouble. Praise the Lord. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego taught me something about survival in the storm. In that, no matter what kind of storm come against you, remember, if you provide God with the faith, he provides you with the method of survival. He provides you with the kit of know-how, how to survive. There are certain things you have to say in a storm. You can't just cry your eyes out and let the tears run down and, and just fall apart and become a nervous wreck. If you do that, you're losing the battle. Certain things you have to think and certain things you have to say. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego expressed their thoughts in these words when the storm came against them and never to never said, we're going to burn you to ashes and that's my decree and no man can change it. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego could have gone silent. Praise the Lord and just break up in tears and frustrations and said, oh God, why are you gonna let us be burned? They didn't ask that question. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, the God that we serve, he is gonna let us burn. He is able to deliver us. And not only is he able, he will deliver us. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And if you want to survive your storm, you better start talking, honey. You better stop crying and open your beautiful mouth and tell the devil that God that I serve is able to deliver me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and start speaking what is to be and what will be if you only speak the positive things about God Almighty. They said he's able and he will. Hallelujah. You know that moved God. That moved him to the extent, praise our God, God said, my God, those fellows really believe me. They believe when they go through the fire, they're not going to be burned. They actually believe the word of God. God Almighty got off of his throne in glory, honey. You can move God. Oh, yes, you can. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what you've got to learn about God in your storm, that you can move him. And when God move against your storm, he's going to bring peace in that storm. He's going to bring you a deliverance in that storm. Praise the Lord, God Almighty got off of his throne in glory, stepped off of his throne in glory, children. Praise the Lord, and designed the body of his revelation 
which was word made flesh because God doesn't have a body. God stepped into time. The spirit doesn't have a body because God is a spirit. But God stepped into time. Praise God. And the body that he was going to take on. And he stepped into time in immortality in the body that he was going to take on. Walked into the fire furnace just ahead of Shadrach and Meshach. And when he walked into the furnace in this invisible form, praise the Lord, and said to the flames of fire, I want you to cool it. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you put me out don't mean nothing. You put me in a fire furnace doesn't mean anything. Because wherever you put me, God is. Praise the Lord. And there is nothing to worry about. God Almighty made himself a form of likeness that a man could identify. Praise the Lord, and it must have been the form that Jesus took on because Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked in, could identify him. Praise the Lord, he, Nebuchadnezzar didn't say, I see a spirit. He said, I see four men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I see four men. Praise the Lord. Now, here is God in the likeness of a man walking around in a fire furnace telling the flames to cool it and when the boys fell out in the fire they didn't need a fan to, to, to keep comfortable they didn't need to even fan themselves God took all the heat out the furnace and put in an air conditioner praise the name of God oh hallelujah thank you Jesus he put in an air conditioner and those boys were in the fire just as comfortable up walking around because God told the flame, say, look, say, burn the cords that they have on their wrists and on their feet, but don't burn them. And don't singe not a strand of hair that they have on their heads. And don't even get no smell of smoke on their clothes. You hear me? to learn how to survive in a storm, children. It's what you think about God that makes him so available to you. What you feel about God. What you see about God. Hallelujah. Now here is God in a fire in the likeness of a man identifiable to the extent that when Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he said, I see four. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And his servants felt that he must be going off of his rocker because we know we put in three. Praise the Lord, but the king is claiming that he see four. You know, Nebuchadnezzar asked this question, who is that God? Who can deliver you out of my hand? When I start a storm, nobody can stop it. Praise, this is Nebuchadnezzar. When I saw the storm, nobody can stop it. But Shadrach and Meshach and the better go do better. That there is another God above you, O King Nebuchadnezzar. You can start it and he can stop it. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Now, there are these elements of the storm. One that is stopped by God and another one that is stopped by the devil. Let me detour here just for a minute. Some storm, the devil call him off after he started. And the reason why he call him off after he started is because the person that he's putting in this storm is discovering too much about God. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't think you heard what I said. Jesus. Satan starts a storm 
it's from the very pit of hell. He starts a storm and he says to his demons, say, we're going to drown her. We're going to destroy her. We're going to destroy him in this storm. And he get his demons all organized and get the storm going. Praise the Lord. And they stand back and just wait for the individual to commit suicide. Wait for the individual to jump out of a window. Wait for the individual to have a nervous breakdown. Wait for the individual to just go out of their mind. Praise the Lord. Instead of that happening, the individual start crying. The individual start praying. The individual start saying, say the Lord rebuke you. The individual start dropping his anchor, start having an all night prayer, start fasting, start praying. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when they start fasting and praying, having an all night prayer meeting, waking up the next morning feeling good, waking up the next morning feel like running, waking up the next morning feel like fighting, and the devil look at the demons and say, what's happening here? She's supposed to go crazy, but she isn't going crazy. She's getting a victory through the power of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so the devil said to his demons, say, hey, y'all come on back. Stop the song. Because the more the winds blow, the more she call up sad. The more the winds blow, the more she say in the name of Jesus. The more the winds blow, the more she say, it's just another day. The Lord has kept me. The more the winds blow, the more she shout and praise the Lord. The more the winds blow, the more she speak in tongues, the more she shout, the more she run up and down the aisles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so Satan calls off his demons and says, leave her alone. Don't mess with her no more. Praise the Lord, because every time we take her case, she get closer to God. Every time we take her case, she go and get a prayer to me. Praise the Lord. Saints, you got to survive. You got to learn how to survive. Don't you know, if you fight right, the devil will leave you for a while. Oh, yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, he called off his enemy, his forces, on the case of Job. The Lord didn't tell the devil, that's enough. The devil gave up on his own. Praise the name of God. There is nothing in the Bible that tells you that the Lord told Satan, that's enough. Uh-uh. Satan himself gave up because Job showed Satan, praise the Lord, if I never feel God, I know my Redeemer lives. Praise the name of God. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You see, some of you all can't make it unless you get a shout. Some of you all can't make it unless the choir sing and get you all happy. Some of you all can't make it unless the drummer beat the drum and the piano play, organ play. Some of you all can't make it without that. But that some of us don't need the organ. Some of us know without a musical instrument that God is able. Some of us know without a tambourine God is able. Some of us know without any clapping hands or patting feet God is able. Some of us know if I don't have a friend down here, I got one up yonder. Some of us know that the God that we serve is able.
to survive in a storm. How to survive. Hallelujah. Don't put your trust in man. If you do, you'll never survive. Never. Never. Never put your trust in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I'm looking at people that men have walked away from. Looking at people whose institutionalizing of their lives is caused by shock, disappointment. Praise the Lord. I wouldn't let nobody that walk on feet like mine drive me nuts. Praise the name of God. Thank you, teacher. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody is worth that much to me that I'm going to the gut house while you sit around here having a good time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. If anybody go to the gut house, you go. The Lord is my light. The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be a friend? Praise the Lord. You got to learn how to survive. And people who put all that trust in individuals always get hurt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your confidence must be in God. It has to be in God. If you're going to weather this storm, honey, you're going to have to put your trust in God. Hallelujah. And if you put your trust in God, the day will come that the devil will learn respect for you. You'll teach him respect. you got to teach the devil a lesson. you got to teach him once and for all. Praise the Lord. You are not one of these people who can be easily persuaded. You are not one of these people who can be easily detoured just because of pressure, just because of what you are going through. You are not one of these people who are backslide because someone stopped speaking to you. You are not one of these people that are so easily discouraged because uh, you have learned like Job did, if you haven't got a friend in the world, you got to learn how to have faith in yourself and in your God. Thank you, Jesus. You got to believe in yourself sometimes as well as in God. But because a person that has faith in himself is also a person that God can use. Because when you have faith in your ability and you hook that up with God's ability and you got an unbeatable combination, hallelujah, because the Lord is going to do his part and you need to do your part. Praise the Lord. You have something to do in the storm yourself. Don't expect God to do everything. You have to do something. Praise the Lord. And Job did it all that God required him to do. He did every bit of it. And when the final analysis came, the devil called off his demons and said, leave him alone because the man is crazy about this Jehovah. Hallelujah. We thought that we could break his will and break his spirit, but we have discovered that the man is like the rock of ages. He will not be moved. Glory. Hallelujah. And so God comes to us in our storms. He comes to encourage us. He comes to help us. He comes to reveal himself to us. Praise the Lord. Now back up again to the Hebrew boys. 
when uh, the king looked into the furnace and uh, saw these uh, three boys and a fourth man, praise God, that he could not identify by name, but God had a look about him that he could identify him by looks. <laughs> praise the Lord. And when God revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said these words. Said, I see four, and one of them look like the, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Shadrach and Meshach and the Abednego was called by Nebuchadnezzar say, come on out of the furnace. Everything is going to be all right. I know now that the God that you serve can stop any storm. The God that you serve can stop the wind from blowing and the waves from rolling. I know now that the God that you serve is able to do anything. He's able to move your mountain. He's able to fill up your valley. He's able to straighten your crooked. And let me say to those of you that are trying to survive the storms of life, there are certain things you got to say in a storm. You just got to say certain things. If you don't say them, you can lose your mind. Or they'll dry you up a wall. But if you start talking back and saying the positive things, praise the Lord, hallelujah, say the positive things. David gave you a positive analysis of what a child of God supposed to say when the pressures of life is coming against you. David said, you talk like this. When you're in the valley, you talk like this. The Lord is my shepherd. And uh, I shall not want He maketh me to lie down. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley, oh, if I walk through the valley, through the shadows of death, Even if you don't feel him, he's with you. Even if you don't see him, he's with you. Even if you don't know it, he's with you. Can't you tell the Lord is with you? Can't you tell the Lord is with you? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you.